This is the best possible start for new players in Palea. I'm going to be teaching you how to farm gold, how to progress very quickly so that you're not bottlenecked, because this game does require real time to pass for certain events. I'm going to teach you the most optimal ways to play to get ahead of other players so that you can start collecting and building and farming exactly what you want to make lots of money so that you can get all the de decorations you want, how to properly spend and gain renown so that your character is not constantly having to eat all the time and leveling up incredibly slowly, what characters to increase your relationships with so you can unlock very certain things that will absolutely make the game a breeze. Let's get into it. But first, what even is Palea? To sum it up really quickly, it's a game where you upgrade tools, you farm things, you level up skills, you create relationships with NPC characters, and you can get decorations from them as well as interesting dialogue. You can even romance some of these characters. Just a quick note, when creating your character, you can always change this later. You can change every single part of this later. You don't have to go buy clothing or anything. Your starting equipment does not matter, so you don't have to, like, you know, deck your character out and stuff because, again, you just open a menu and change this whenever you want. So, let me explain the naming system. The first box up here, your character's full name, is what will be displayed above your character's head to other players and in the chat box. So, don't use your real name. You don't have to use two names. A lot of people use two names. It's whatever you want to name. I don't believe you can change this. The nickname is what the NPCs will call you in their dialogue. That's basically it. When you first spawn in, you'll have a chat with Gina, and you'll be given some choices for answers. None of these choices in the game actually matter. All it does is judge your character, and on your inventory screen, you can see here, I chose the very first choice of the game, uh, giving me the air personality type. The more choices you make based on your personality type, this changes. This does not affect combat currently. This does not affect anything in the game whatsoever other than the little icon that shows up on your character page. So don't worry about it. Also, you don't have to worry too much about answer choices. This simply changes quests slightly later in the game or uh, relationship statuses slightly. But you can't break your character, you can't mess things up, you can't lock yourself out of quest rewards. It is simply purely story and flavor, and there is nothing wrong or bad that you can do when choosing an answer. So before you even do anything in the game, I'm going to have you set up your settings so that you can play much more efficiently and properly. And these might be a bit different for Nintendo Switch users, I'm filming this a couple days before the game comes out on Switch, so I'm not able to help you with that. But essentially, you want uh, bag rows and action bar to be as high as possible. You do not want to use persistent center reticule, because this will mess up your initial aiming later when we start hunting. Also, uh, toggle to sprint is a very nice thing, because it just helps you move around easier with less button pushes. And... Um, you don't want to eat when you're full generally because that will waste items, so you want to turn this one off. Wrap action bar is just nice for PC users. I don't know how this will work for console users, and uh, I just have a default because I'm not streaming. Uh, fishing cast speed, the higher it is, the faster you can generally fish. Uh, other than that, you can just uh, set your quality and other things however you like. Uh, field of view isn't important in this game. It's not like a first-person shooter. I leave everything else basically at default, but those are the main settings that you want to have in this game to play efficiently. So the very first task is to find Ashura in Kilima, and it's pretty simple. The game's going to teach you how to play. It's going to teach you the buttons that you'll need to use in order to navigate and move around. This game has very snappy, simple and uh, feels good controls. So just go ahead and play around with them a bit. Once the cutscene ends, you'll be technically in the game and you're going to be seeing other players as well. If you push uh, your map button, I don't know what it is on console, but it's Ilma for PC users. You can see we're this, uh, this blue arrow here and we need to go south and we can see our quest objective here with this yellow flag at Ashura. And uh, what you can see also at the top of your screen is a compass and when you spin the camera around, you'll see that yellow flag as well. So do note that you can't technically die in this game. If you uh, go deep underwater, you will just teleport back to the shoreline. 
There is no dying. There is no health bar. This thing at your top left is your food bar, not your health bar. So do not worry. There is no fall damage. You Nothing can kill you in this game. There is... There, like, other players can't hurt you. They can't grief you. And hey, look, it's a wild animal. So on your way to town, go ahead and just grab things off the ground if you can. You don't have any tools yet, so there's not a whole lot that you can do. And if you want to talk to people, you can. Uh... I'm going to talk more about talking to the NPCs later, but right now it's not very important. Uh, though the game did give me an indicator that it, it did um, give me two thumbs up for talking to that character. But right now it's not a big deal. More on talking to NPCs later. You can also jump around, just kind of get a feel of the controls and how things work. But we're going to uh, essentially, and it's uh, December when I'm filming this, so it's they, there's Christmas de decorations. All right, we're going to go talk to Ashura now, and that's going to get us set up with the beginning of the game. No need to uh, free to watch. Actually, I might as well just do it that way you don't get lost, because some people get lost in this town. It's pretty basic once you understand it, but it can be a bit confusing. So we're going to go to this building with the two, uh, like, beer mug cups on the on the top there. And uh, Ashura is this big purple elven dude. And I'm just going to skip the dialogue. You can read it for yourself if you want, but I've played this game plenty of times. So he gives us an axe, and then we need to meet Hodari at the housing plot. So if I open my map and scroll out, here at the top right is the quest objective. Again, uh, the compass at the top of your screen, just look for that yellow flag, and then walk your way there. Pretty simple stuff. Another thing, too, that I recommend is auto run. I don't know how this will work on console, but with auto run, you can save... Uh, your your fingers from having to push that many buttons. So right now I'm auto running and when I turn the camera my character will move in that direction So I don't have to constantly hold my run button and because I have sprint to toggle allowed Well, um, I'm always running so I don't have to hold another button to run So th your housing plot is an instance. What is an instance? instances are a e every single player has this exact same housing plot, but you share your own universe, so to speak. So, your housing plot is yours. No one can come in and mess with it unless you give them explicit permission to do so. And that is what an instance is. It's uh, kind of like in other games like World of Warcraft when you do a dungeon. Well, you're not sharing the dungeon with the whole server. You have your own private dungeon to yourself, essentially. And uh, I'm just going to skip the cutscene. So, we're going to talk to Hodari here. And he's going to give us a mission to uh, clean the place up, basically. <laughs> He was in the middle of doing it, and now we get to do it. So we're going to clear some debris from the plot. Now, there's a, there's one very important thing that you can mess up here that is permanent, and this is why I'm going to tell you about it. You see this little broken sign here? Some players love this decoration, and they refuse to break it. If you break this, it is gone forever. You have to make a brand new account to get it back. There is currently no way to get this broken sign back, so... Uh, some people, you know, they have it up in their housing plot and they, they kind of show it as a badge of honor. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tear it down. And I'm just going to use the axe here. So basically, you're going to use the axe to chop trees and wooden objects like this. And you just, uh, you know, hold the use button. I'm going to show you an, an advanced technique because this is a beginner's guide, the best possible guide. And that is animation canceling. It's not going to save you too much time, but it does help. So I'm going to hold my, for, for me it's left click. I don't know what the button is on Nintendo Switch. The game should have told you by now. I'm going to hold left click and this is the wood chopping speed. You can see we're just chopping the tree. No big deal, right? Now animation canceling is a little different. And the developers, um, my screen just bugged out. What the hell? Weird. Okay, anyway, um, <laughs> still some glitch. Excuse what is going on? Weird. Anyway, animation canceling is whenever you push the button to chop the tree, not hold it, and then you push it again at a certain time so that you chop slightly faster. In this case, you'll see sparks fly once I hit the wood. I'm going to push my button again after the sparks fly. So it, it kind of looks I it kind of looks like this. Your character doesn't have the full swing animation and you'll notice that it's a bit faster. And once you get used to the timing, you can harvest much faster than other players that aren't also doing this. So, you can see that I'm basically skipping the wind back animation. Also, I have no idea what's going on with my graphics. I maybe I should update my uh my graphic drivers or something. I really don't know why it's doing that. But um anyway, I'm going to go ahead and chop these trees and also I'm going to switch to the pickaxe and uh break all of this stone. 
Now, what I recommend as a new player is that uh, you wait to clear the rest of this later when you have faster and better, more efficient tools, because it's not really necessary right now to clear everything out. Once you've turned in the quest and talked to Hodari again, you'll get a new set of quests that says to craft a wooden storage chest and to place it. And you're going to be like, well, how do I craft that? Well, you actually have to do the second one first, which is place your work table. So in your inventory, you'll have a work table. You're just going to place it down. And don't worry, it's not like survival games. You can always pick this up and place it wherever you want anytime. You don't have to destroy it or build a new one or anything of the sort. Once you have that table placed, you can go up to it and hit the craft items button. And then you can craft yourself the storage chest, which you should have enough wood and stone by now. If not, go clear out some more junk around the, the area here. And there we go. So now we're going to place the storage chest. And to do that, I'm just going to highlight it in my inventory here and then hit my use button. And there we go. We have a chest. So now we need to craft a tent at the workbench and then place that. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, I have enough materials, so we're going to go ahead and click make. That will pop it into my inventory. And then I can just throw it down wherever there's room. And ta-da! So now that we've done that, Ani will show up, who is another character of this game. You go through the dialogue, you know, tell him whatever you want, and he gives us some milk. So there we go. He introduces us to the mailbox system where characters will give you items, they will send you mail, and recipes and stuff as you do quests. This is usually where you get your quest rewards. As you build relationships with characters, they will randomly send you stuff as a gift. Uh, because uh, part of it is you'll be giving them gifts in order to increase reputation with them and so on and so forth. So there we go. Uh, now we're going to leave the housing plot and do more quests. By the way, uh, in one of the quests we did receive some grilled mushrooms. You'll also note that you will be randomly finding these mountain morel mushrooms that give you plus five focus points. Focus is that meter in the top left of your screen. This is basically your hunger meter. It only goes down when you do actions, and I don't mean jumping and walking around. I mean, you know, harvesting things, hunting, any anything that gains experience points from one of these skills will consume focus. I do not recommend eating these raw because it is not efficient. Once you learn how to make a campfire and cook them, then you can start eating those, but there are way better foods, and I'm going to teach you all about efficiency later. By the way, this is what a real player looks like. They will be human. All the character NPCs in this game will not be human. They will be elvish or something. I, I know they have an official name, but uh, yeah, these are all other real players that you can interact with. You can't attack them. You can't grief them. Uh, there's no um, collision with them. Uh, you can talk to them, though. There is no voice chat, unfortunately. Now, we have a lot of things going on on our compass here. We have uh, many different little quest objectives here. We need to ask Gina about the strange artifact. Talk to Bad Drew to learn how to garden, and talk to Reth to learn how to cook. And so we're going to do all of those things. And you're going to basically learn to get used to uh, talking to every single character that you can. And depending on the time of day, they may be asleep. So right now it is 11.50 p.m. at night. Normally Gina would be asleep, but because we're a new player, she's out here doing, you know, stuff. But uh, some of these characters are in bed, and we can't interact with them until the morning. So just be aware. Uh, depending on what time you're playing and how long you're doing things, it, you might have to wait a bit. Uh, a day cycle is one hour long. In the top right, you can see what time it is. You can see we are in the middle of the night, and uh, daytime, you know, lasts much longer than nighttime. You have dawn on the left, that's the kind of golden part, and dusk on the right, which is kind of the redder orange-ish color. Those, dawn and dusk are 15 minutes each, and, um... I, be I believe, no, they're seven and a half minutes each for a total of 15 minutes. Uh, and then daytime is 30 minutes, and then nighttime is 15 minutes. By the way, as you run around, if you see any kind of stone little nodes that look like this with the kind of orangish color, those are copper nodes, so make sure to pick them up as soon as you can. You're going to need a bunch of this later, so you might as well grab it now. And uh, as don't worry about too much about trees, those are pretty easy to get. But copper can be kind of rare sometimes, especially early on, especially when there's a lot of new players. Everyone's going to need copper, so grab it up when you can. They only respawn uh, a few times throughout the day. There's a few ways to get around it. Like right now, uh, there would be a bunch of copper along this wall, but someone has already grabbed most of it. This is just a regular stone node. I don't really need those right now because there's plenty on our island, on our housing plot uh, that we can use. But... 
If you see copper, again, you want to grab it because we're, you're going to hit a bottleneck later if you aren't grabbing it now. So I was able to talk to Badru at night even though he was sleeping by just talking to him through his door. It glitches sometimes. Reth was unavailable because not only is he asleep at night, he has other things he does at night. So I'm not able to find him until the morning or afternoon. So we're going to proceed with Badru for now. And uh, he's going to teach us how to garden. He's going to give us all the stuff that we need. Soil and makeshift uh, gardening tool. That's what I'm going to call it for YouTube's sake. And the this is very important for money making is gardening. It is one of the best like t ways to make money uh, whenever you go to bed and wake up and you just have crops ready to go that you can sell. One, one of the best money makers in my opinion. So you want to learn gardening and you want to have as much soil as possible. We'll talk more about that later. So for now, again, we can move these whenever we want. We're just going to put two soils down. And it's important that you put them next to each other. And I'll uh, the, the reason why is that plants benefit when they're next to each other. More on that later. But now that we put it down, we're going to use our gardening tool and uh, just carve out some squares here. There we go. Now, one faster way to do this instead of the way I'm doing it is you can kind of sweep your mouse around or your controller, whatever you're playing on, and uh, kind of... <laughs> Kind of just paint better and prettier things, right? And these are just items on the ground here. Once you fully t uh, till it, you'll just randomly get an item. They're completely random. So um, don't think that, oh, because you put a, a soil down in this exact spot that these exact items will be found. That is not the case. And as you discover and uh, play the game more, you'll get rarer and rarer items. Sometimes you can get gold. You can, you can get a lot of stuff from the soil, but it's not really a means of farming. It's just a nice little random bonus to keep your attention to the game, honestly. It's nothing that important. But I'm going to go ahead and till the rest of these here. And then we're going to plant some seeds and learn how to water them. Very basic stuff, but uh, it's something that you'll be doing, you know, every couple hours when you're playing later on in the game. And it's important to uh, keep the plants watered. They don't wither and die. It's just that you they won't fully grow if you aren't watering and taking care of them. And also later on, this gets way faster when you have a better tool. This this may have looked like it took a while. And that's because we have a, a, a wooden stick with a wooden plank on the end. Okay. Once you get the higher level tools, it's so much faster. So don't stress out about it. <laughs> uh, that's part of the growth effort, right? And so now we have four carrots and four onion seeds, and we're going to plant them down in a kind of crisscross pattern. So uh, so if we put, or, or here's how I prefer to do it. So we have a carrot here and a carrot here. And what happens is it, if you highlight the items, you can see that carrots uh, prevent weeds from growing to nearby crops. And then the onions also prevent weeds from growing to nearby crops. So not the most important to do it right now, but um, we basically... Uh, this top plot, this bottom one, the left and the right one to the carrot will have weed prevention if I was planting anything else. But uh, essentially, if you plant two carrots next to each other, they will not benefit as the same species cannot help one another. So what we're going to do is put a carrot here and then put a carrot here. So what happens is this onion in the middle will prevent weeds from this carrot on the left and this carrot on the right. And then this carrot in the middle prevents the weeds from the four onions around it. That's why we have this one over here kind of separate by itself. That's uh, And we're going to get more seeds, of course, so that we can min-max this. But we're going to talk to... Um, oh, we're going to grab the watering can now. Run over to the water. Fill it with some water. And then we're going to water the plants. And as you upgrade, you can water more plants at once. But right now, because we just started, we can only water one square at a time. And this, these grow in real time while you're logged in. If you are not logged in, they will not grow. So you can't just close the game and then, um, you know, come back tomorrow and they'll be grown. You have to leave the game running. <laughs> now for Nintendo Switch users, I don't know if that means you can just leave the game on. I'm not really sure how that works for consoles, but for PC, we have to be logged in. Otherwise, it does not work. Also, what's very annoying at the start is you have very little storage or item space. This is your bag space. You can upgrade that later, of course. Make a habit of coming back to your housing plot and just putting everything into storage. I can store up to 400 items right now, and we can upgrade that later. So, well, I don't want to store my ammo in there because we'll, we'll need that to hunt. I'm going to store everything else, though. Also, we can keep these smoke bombs. This is how you catch bugs. 
More on that later, but we haven't started that exactly yet. Now, while you wait for NPCs to wake up and while you wait for your crops to grow, it is important, uh, if you want to build relationships, to simply talk to every NPC. You don't have to give them any gifts at the moment, just talk to them, and you'll see these little thumbs up. That means that you talk to them for that full day. The day resets at 6 a.m. every day. So I just talked to Shane, I don't know how to say his name, but um, when my timer at the top right reaches 6 a.m., I can talk to him again, and that is a new opportunity to get some thumbs up, which slowly raises his relationship level. So you can see here, uh, just talking to him for the first time gave me that tiny little bump uh, of level uh, on our friendship level. And as you level up, you'll get Renown, which is going to allow you to store more focus and be more focus efficient, as, uh, as well as buy more housing space, which... Uh, more on that later. But for now, you need to focus on harvesting copper. I also recommend just playing around like you see these little animals. You can, you can experiment with hunting if you want. You know, get some loot, because everything that you pick up, everything that you kill, everything that you harvest can be sold for money, which you're going to need a lot of later. And um, I'm not sure if I'm even hitting that one. Now, these are a little bit harder to kill until you get a higher level bow, but you still have to hunt with the bow to level it up and uh, level up your hunting to unlock the next uh, tiers of tools. But we do need copper. That's the main thing. So I'm just going to run around the map and look for some copper. There's also clay in certain spots. But, um, you know, just run around and harvest things for a while. That That's what this game is. It's a lot of farming. It's a lot of harvesting. It's a lot of gathering. And so just have fun with it. Kind of, you know, get a feel for the game. And these things can be a little tricky early on. But um, <laughs> just go for it. Well, I thought he was. St I thought he stopped running. Every the, the way this works too is once they stop running, they will kind of chill for a bit. But if you shoot near them, they will continue to run away. All right, it looks like he stopped. So there we go. We got him. <laughs> and it, the better bows shoot more straight. It gets way easier. Also, if you have the patience for it, fishing leveling fishing is very important because it unlocks certain crafting stations that will make you lots of money over time passively. So leveling fishing, absolutely do it if you have the downtime, if you have the patience. Fishing is pretty quite simple. It's pretty intuitive. Um, whenever <laughs> the fish bites three times, it'll shake the bobber, and then you left click or use your use button. And then you just keep these little green parentheses in between the bobber here. And I'll talk more about fishing later, how to be efficient with it, because it's there's basically a way to do it wrong and do it right. And uh, there we go, we caught a fish. So we can sell that, get some easy money. So lots of NPCs around the town will have quests for you, especially as a new player. Einhar is the fishing bot. Uh, funny joke, right, from MMORPGs. And he uh, gave me a quest to catch a fish, which I unfortunately did before talking to him. But I can just simply catch another fish. You don't have to catch a fish in one of those swirling wool pools. That just gives you a quality fish. So this one will just give me a regular fish. So, at some point, you're going to notice your focus meter in the top left be empty. If you do Einhar's quest to catch a fish, he grills it for you. So that's a source of free early food. It's not a big deal. Food is really easy later, but right now, we don't have a lot of access to it or money to buy it or make it. So, the reason why you want to keep your focus up is because when you have focus, you get an experience multiplier bonus. So right now, the bonus is 20%. This means that everything that I do that consumes focus will give me 20% bonus XP, which means I level up faster, and leveling up faster is pretty crucial early on to progress. At this point, you are probably asking, well, where can I find copper? You just talked to Ani here, you know, the bug catching boy, and he gave you a quest to catch a common blue butterfly and a Kalima night moth, and you're like, well, I don't know where those are. It's 2023, someone's had to have made a map by now, and that is true. So... In your web browser, you can go to paleomaps.com, and you can click Kilima Village, and you can find everything you want. So let's say if we're mining and we want to find copper ore, well, there you go. That's all the copper ore spawns. Pretty simple stuff. If you are uh, bug catching and you want to find common bugs, well, we're looking for a blue butterfly. That's part of the quest. So you turn that on. There's all the good blue butterfly locations. All right. And then we need to find a Kalima Night Moth. Obviously, these spawn at night. And there are the Night Moth spawns. So this makes things really easy to find. It looks like Reth is now awake, so we can talk to him to learn how to cook. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now we have the campfire recipe. Very important for cooking food early on. And uh, we need to craft a campfire, which means we need to go back to our island. I'm sorry, our housing plot. <laughs> I play other games where it's an island, okay? But um, essentially, there's two ways to do this. You can walk up here to your housing plot located to the northeast of town, or you can use this button that says return to housing plot. You can only use this button every 30 minutes. But what I recommend for now is look around the map, and if you see anyone with like a yellow speech bubble or a yellow flag or a yellow exclamation point, to go talk to those characters first. So now that I have basically cleared out all of the yellow exclamation point quests that I can see on this map. There's another area of the game. We're going to go there later. Don't worry. For now, just worry about the, the starting zone here. And my inventory is full of resources. I can't carry anything else. It's a good time to go back to the, um, the base camp and store everything. And uh, we're going to craft a campfire, do more quests. Our, our crops... Uh, the, the way the crops grow is every day at 6 in the morning, that is when a tick happens. What that means is that your crops will um, basically uh, get a new stage of growth. Because I planted those crops before 6 a.m., they should have their first stage of growth, meaning I need to water them. So essentially, you need to water your crops after 6 a.m. every day. And that's what we're going to be doing first thing as soon as we return here, once it finishes loading. And uh, yes, let's go ahead and water those crops once again. You'll know they need to be watered because there will be an empty bar above them. So go ahead and make sure to keep these watered. They take several in-game days to grow or several real-life hours. So don't fret. Uh, you won't be able to complete this quest right away. But once you do, you'll unlock more stuff. So it's, it's a good thing to get it going as soon as you can. Again, a lot of things in this game are real-life time-gated. So I'm going to go ahead and store... Just throw everything I got in storage. It's whatever. And uh, I actually got grilled meat from doing the hunting quest. So I'm just going to eat that. There we go. And uh, <laughs> now we have some mail. Go ahead and check that. So we got uh, some an item there from Gina. There we go. Make sure the mail is empty. And it's time to craft a campfire. Let's see if we have the right stuff for it. Go to my crafting bench. Cramp campfire ready to craft. We're going to go ahead and make one of those. And now we can start cooking basic things. Just slap it down wherever. And now it wants us to forage for mushrooms. So mushrooms are these little things right here, these mountain morels. You can use that paleomaps.com to find them, you know, outside of your, your uh, housing plot. But I think I might have grabbed all the ones earlier on my plot. But there should be more than three if you didn't. Oh, wait, there we go. There's a third one. And then now that we have the three mountain morels... We can go ahead and craft a grilled mushroom, making them far more efficient for focus. So if you eat these raw, they're 5 focus. If you, uh, if you craft them, they are 50 focus. So much more efficient to cook three of them and then eat it that way. And it's basically a free source of food because those things are all over the place. They're very, very common. You'll have, if you play for a couple days, you're going to have hundreds of these in your inventory. I'm going to go ahead and collect it, and there we go. Eat a grilled mushroom to gain focus. That completes that. Then we need to use 50 focus. So check this out. Whenever I chop a tree, it's going to use some of my focus. And there we go. Whenever I loot the item that we chopped, that used 1 out of 50 focus. Different tasks uh, use more focus. Uh, I don't exactly know how much focus is used on certain tasks, uh, I've never really bothered to do that kind of research. It's not super important, but essentially for the next part like that one used two focus So uh, obviously it's worth a little bit more and I bet if we go out and harvest copper, which is what I should have been doing uh, You know, we're gonna burn through even more focus even faster But you'll complete that quest as you gather things. So don't worry too much about it. I Also want to point out that you could only track three quests at a time for some reason I'm not sure why you can only track three, but you'll see this little pinned icon here if you want to track something else, simply click the pinned icon. We can unpin that one and then pin this one if we want to track it. And uh, just stuff like that. But gardening is going to take a while. There's no reason for me to currently track it. At some point, you'll have a quest called Spiffied Up to craft and place uh, furniture items. So if we craft a table here, let me show you what happens. So we're going to craft this table with 35 uh, wood. And this little thing will pop up. And what this is, is it unlocks another furniture item you can craft within that same furniture's family. So there we go. We just learned how to do the log cabin stump chair. And the reason why is because this is the log cabin furniture line. 
And eventually, by crafting these items, you will be able to learn everything in the log cabin furniture line. Every time you craft one, you can learn a new one. It's not RNG. It's not random what you get. It will not have you select something you don't already know. So don't worry about what you choose. You will be able to gain them all. You will be able to craft every single thing and discover every single thing as long as you are at least crafting one item. So once you have crafted the wardrobe item and put it down, this is how you change your appearance, like I talked about at the start of the video. This is how you, uh, you know, change all the way you look and everything like that. Simple. Pretty easy. And very early on, too. So at some point, you're going to get the quest House Sweet House. Place the foundation of your house. To do that, you see at the bottom of uh, middle of our screen, there is a little house icon with the H button. Uh, I don't know what the button is on Nintendo Switch, but I'm going to push that. And then I'm going to click Harvest House and uh, put that down somewhere. And this is very important to get started on as soon as possible because this is in real life time gated by eight real life hours. And we're going to need planks and bricks, but we can't make those yet because we need refining stations to create these. By chopping trees, we're not getting planks, we're just getting wood. We're just getting logs. So in order to do that, we're going to have to make some money. More on that later, but for now, uh, just continue doing all of your questing. So we have Ancient Battery to do. Uh, we have Cooking 101, Return to Wrath. Tish is here because we uh, put our house down and she's here to greet us and uh, uh, basically give us quests uh, in order to teach us how to make planks and bricks. So we're going to be um, <laughs> forging level 2 to get uh, the recipe for sawmill and stone smelting. Uh, for mining level 2. So right now my mining is only level 1. My foraging is level 2. So I can do the foraging one now. But I'm going to need money for that. We'll, we'll get money in a bit. And we're going to do it in a more efficient way. So while you're out trying to find copper. If you see these little fishing poles. Make sure to scoop them up. Because it's very good early game money. Also as you randomly explore. You might see little treasure chests. Just kind of hanging about randomly in areas now this one i can't get to yet because i don't have a glider but um essentially this is one way to make some gold because those chests do contain gold inside of them use paleomaps.com to find all of the spawns by the way you'll run into uh clay at some point you're going to need a lot of this later for a bunch of stuff so you might as well grab it now it does take a little bit longer to respawn and anytime there is a fresh launch all the new players scoop it up immediately, so the sooner you can get it, the better. As a matter of fact, here's a list of priorities right now as a new player. You want to focus on copper, clay, quality fish from the swirly pools, and anything grabbable on the ground. Now, when grabbing plants off the ground, instead of running up and then use, pushing the use button to pick them up, you'll have an animation where you stuff them in your pocket. If you jump over them and use the grab button, you you simply don't stop moving. This is an animation cancel. It still shows your character putting the item in its pocket, but because you're airborne, you're still able to move. It's just a much faster way of moving around the map and grabbing items, because you're going to be grabbing thousands of items, and you definitely want to save time when you do it. After doing a bunch of quests and uh, leveling up your skills, you're going to notice that you have uh, some renown here. And it's very important that you spend Renown properly and often because this thing caps at 1,000. And if you haven't spent it, then all the Renown you're earning after capping at 1,000 is lost. Renown is used for a couple things at the start. It's used to either increase your maximum focus so that when you eat food, you can eat higher levels of food to restore more focus without maxing out. But secondly, you can use it to increase your bonus XP gain. That's right. And a lot of new players messed this up. I sure did when I first learned it, or before I learned it. But um, essentially, I'm going to teach it to you now, because it's very important. To increase your... Hold on, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. To increase your maximum focus, you want to return to the area that you started the game at. That is, behind this waterfall at the top of the Phoenix Falls. You're going to return to where it all began. And there's a dragon statue there that you're going to talk to and give 100 renown to, to increase your maximum XP gain. Your maximum XP gain will eventually cap out, you can't increase it further, as well as your focus. The rest of the renown is spent upgrading your housing plot to just place down more objects. But you don't need that right now. So you talk to this dragon, you go up to it, you push the use button, and uh, the game won't let me do it yet, because I haven't done the quest Ancient Battery which is uh, <laughs> to go behind the waterfall here and uh, turn in that quest objective. So just keep it in mind 
you know, you're going to have to do a few starter quests before you can talk to that dragon and increase your maximum focus. So I'm going to go ahead and spoil the riddle for you. So you'll see here there's like a bowl in the middle. It's rusted away. When you go up to the door, it says, To enter here, you must supply that which grows life. Well, that would be water. You use your watering can. You put some water in it and make sure you have enough water in your watering can. There's water nearby. And there you go. That opens the door. So if you're curious, you can't get over to this area until later when you have a glider, which we'll talk about. But down here towards the left, there's a little chest you can grab with some loot in it. There you go. That's going to give you uh, not, not much, but it's worth picking up. We got 11 gold out of it. Then just climb back up and there you go. So by now, your storage is probably getting a little full. 294 out of 400. There's a few things you can do about that. You can always craft more wooden storage chests. Up to eight of them can be placed until you're at maximum. And the only way to increase it beyond that is to upgrade with a better storage chest and make eight of those. They do not stack with the lower tier ones, so you have to delete the low tier ones to get the higher tier ones. But let's talk about money making. So everything in this game just about can be sold for money. There's a few ways to sell things. This little box right here, when you put things in it, it will sell... In the next 8 minutes, there's a shipment. I can get 160 gold. Sounds pretty good, right? But there's a better way to do it. Almost everything that you have that's a raw material can be refined or crafted into something else that will give you more money. For instance, uh, let's see if this... Uh, I forget how to split thing. Okay, so we're just going to split... Uh, <laughs> do it like this, the lazy way. And uh, split stack. Yeah, we're just going to split these down a bit. It's not letting me do it now. Okay, so let's say I sold one flower and one uh, clay. Well, I would get 12 gold. That sounds pretty good, right? But instead, if I go over here and with one clay and one flower, I make 20 smoke bombs. Smoke bombs are used to catch bugs. More on that later. But we, uh, you know, instead of 12 gold, we will now receive 20 gold. So we basically got an 80% increase in our gold by simply making smoke bombs, all right? That's one way of many to do it. Now, all that fish I had you catch earlier, these are quality fish. But we don't want to sell them, even though they sell for quite a bit. Like, that's worth 68. Seven of these are worth 210. You know, it's more than enough for what we need right now. However... We're going to wait until we can learn to grill fish, and then we can grill these fish. And fish uh, quality is based... The quality of the fish and the fish itself will be factored into the cooked fish. And if the cooked fish comes out as quality cooked fish, we multiply our uh, our earnings even more so. But we're, when, you, when we craft these smoke bombs, we don't really multiply anything because you can't craft a quality smoke bomb. So, with uh, the random sundrop lilies you probably picked up and the clay you picked up, just go ahead and uh, craft a bunch of smoke bombs. And yes, you could go catch bugs and sell the bugs for even more if you want, but that's... Uh, it only made one stack? What? Oh, it's because I have everything like this, so the game kind of... No, I don't want to sell that. The game kind of bugged out there a little bit. So let's try that again. And uh, it's supposed to craft a whole bunch of them. All right, there we go. And nope, it's bugged. It's so bugged. Okay, you got to do them one at a time. Whatever, it's fine. But, uh, you know, just, just craft a bunch of these. You don't have to craft too many. We want at least about 250, 300 gold. Nothing more than that. Why is that not working? That that worked us a patch ago. I don't know what's going on. But uh, there's another way to sell as well. Uh, this is only in five minutes. I'll teach you the other way to sell. So we're at 140 there. And uh, it's okay if we miss the timer. I'm gonna. There's a way to sell instantly. But I'm going to go ahead and craft a bunch of these and put them in the sales box. No need to watch me do this. Also, if you if you don't, uh, if you didn't pick up sundrop lilies on, on yours or you couldn't find clay, that's fine. You can make makeshift arrows. Again, it's way more money to make these and sell them than it is to sell the wood and the stone separate. So just, just craft one of these two items a bunch of times until you have about 300 gold. So if you don't want to wait for this shipment case thing to sell, there's another way to do it. When you're in town, which is this part of the map... 
on the right here, you're going to see a little, I don't know what that is. It looks like a little plant in the soil. And uh, this is the, well, I can't mouse over it, but it's the general store. And the way you do it is you simply talk to this little uh, open store button here. And you could buy a bunch of stuff, but we're, we're interested in selling things. So we're going to click on a thing and then sell the stack. There we go. And that's a way to get gold instantly if you need it. So now we have 311 gold and we're going to spend around 100 gold or so on worms. So we're just going to buy them from the store. And where are they at? There we go. So just buy two things of worms. So there we go. That's five and that's ten where I have 211 gold remaining. And here's the thing with worms. As long as you aren't breaking the line, you always get your return on worms and then some. And it exponentially increases how fast you level fishing. You should almost never be fishing without a, a worm until later on when you're collecting every single fish in the game. Now, when fishing with worms, you would equip your fishing pole. I don't know what the button is on N Nintendo Switch, but right-click on PC, click the worm. And also, if you're having trouble aiming, just let it max out and then walk it into the circle. That's the easiest way to fish. And there we go. So now you're fishing with worms, you're going to get exponentially more gold from fish. Remember, every time it's 6 a.m., it's time to water your crops and talk to as many NPCs as possible to gain more reputation with them. We'll be giving, we'll be talking about gift giving later, but right now you're still too new of a character. You're completely broke. You don't really have much to give anyway. So just make sure to talk to every villager NPC you can and uh, water those crops at 6 a.m. Let's go. And just to show you just how crazy fishing gets with the worms, there's, a, there's an even better worm later in the game, and that's what we're working towards now. That's why we're fishing now. Just two of these sicklebacks, right? A, a worm is, is 10 gold. These are quality sicklebacks. They're worth 105 each. So I just made 210 gold from two fish. Except I shouldn't have sold them. I should have cooked them. But more on that later. So to get planks, we need a sawmill. And Ashura sells us the sawmill recipe. I'm trying to do his dialogue first. That way I get it done for the day. I'm going to go ahead and open the shop now by clicking the shop. Forging guild store. There it is. Basic sawmill, 100 gold. We have 100 gold, so we're going to go ahead and purchase that. And uh, right now, we can also upgrade our axe when we have forging level 7, which we don't. We're, we're going to worry about that later. But for now, we also need to be able to turn stone into bricks. And so we have to talk to Odari, which is uh, this character all the way over here to our east. So I'm going to go run there real quick. Here we are. Now, this this person runs around between two different zones. We haven't been to the t the second zone yet, so he might be there if he's not in Kalima. All right, I'm going to skip his dialogue and then, again, buy the basic smelter for 100 gold. You can also buy the recipe for copper bar for 50. You're going to need that, but we need mining level 4. I'm going to go ahead and buy that now, even though I'm not level 4. Uh, we just can't refine it until we are level 4. And then ceramic... I'm going to go ahead and get that as well. It's just good to have them. Uh, mining and wood cutting very important to get early on. So now we're all set to go craft those stations. And in the mailbox is the grilled fish recipe and some other stuff. Grilled meat. We're not really hunting yet, but we're going to grill some fish. And then Zeki, we talked to him. He's the shopkeeper. He's like the, the cat character. You definitely want to get his rep up early on and Badru. More on that later. But for now, we uh, we now have the recipe to grill that fish. So we're going to grill all the fish that we've been catching. And you need two of the same fish. And that's fine. So we can uh, we can click this, or click use quality ingredients, and there we go. And you can mix the fish, which is totally fine. And then go ahead and grill those fish. This is going to level our cooking. And we're not eating this fish. We are selling this. Very important to note. And then while that's going, we're going to water our crops. And we're also going to be doing some other stuff. But, you know, just kind of multitasking, essentially. And I'm going to need more water here soon. So here's the thing with grilling fish. It's pretty much free, except it does take your time, but it does level your cooking. So I cooked two Calico Koi's of quality, and two of those will sell for 68 gold. Now, because I didn't get a quality grilled fish, it still just sells for 68 gold. But if I did get a quality fish it would sell for even more. So it's always a good idea to cook these and then sell them because there is a chance that you cook it at quality level. And even if you don't, at least you're leveling your cooking up. And if you have a lot of fish, you can totally make multiple campfires and have them all going at, at once, but I don't need that right now. 
So you can see here, this quality fish, or this fish is worth 68, and this quality fish is worth 105. So you definitely want to get in on it. Now, if you're wanting focus, go ahead and grill any mushrooms you might have picked up and grill any meat you might have hunted. I didn't do much hunting yet, but I did pick up some mushrooms, so I'm just going to cook these and eat these and uh, fill up my focus. We're going to go ahead and craft the sawmill now. Now that we have a sawmill, we can start making wooden planks. I'm going to go ahead and just place that down. And all you have to do is put your, your wood in here, and then every one minute, it's going to make one plank. So again, real life time. If you want to speed this up, you can make multiple sawmills, but there is a limit to how many you can place down on your land, so beware of that. Also, I'm going to get a smelter started here. There we go. So, we have a smelter now, and uh, right now you can see that the limit is five. So I have one, which is the sawmill, and this is a refining station, so that will be two, so that's a limit of two out of five. I can always pick these back up and put them in storage later, but right now we can only have five of these. I recommend at least two smelters because these things take a while, and if you want, go ahead and get two or even three sawmills. Hell, three smelters is also really nice. And um, just continue chopping wood and mining stone and get these things cranking out because you want to fill this up as soon as possible. We need 35 stone bricks and 100 planks. Do you want to set 100 minutes in the game until you have 100 planks? Or 50 minutes if you have two, two sawmills or even less time if you have three of them going. Now I'm using one of the smelters for copper bars because the sooner we get copper bars, the sooner we can upgrade our tools which lets us hunt better, uh, gather faster, everything is greater and better when you have upgraded tools, especially from your starter items to copper level items. Also, if you're one of those lucky people that actually have real friends that played this game, they can visit your uh, housing plot and they can uh, donate materials as well. So, uh, for instance, if we were friends, I have tons of these things. So, instead of doing it yourself, they can just donate their items to your land. And that makes it a lot faster. So now is a really good time to start clearing out your land of all the rubbish. Now I recommend doing the stone, avoiding these bushes because it's mostly plant fiber. Go after the small trees instead. Clear out the rocks, the small trees, dump them into your refining stations, and just let, let, them, let them cook for a while. Let them uh, turn into planks and bricks. While you're cooking and while you're gathering, let me talk about the request feature. Uh, opening the social pane, I don't know what it is on Nintendo Switch, but it's the O button on PC. You can go to requests, and there's a couple things here. This gift box will show requests from other players or your friends. There's currently none. But um, when there is, if you have an item you can give away, it will give you one renown, which is really nice. Otherwise, you can actually request items from other players. So, for instance, I can request uh, two copper bars. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can do four of these Per real life day. Uh, so, you know, if you want someone, if you, you know, want some food, request the highest food you can get. See if anyone gives them to you. And there you go. I wouldn't waste it on little crappy items. Uh, because, again, you don't get to do this again for a full real life day. Um, 20 planks. I'm not going to waste it on planks. Like, I'm just going to go with these two and see if anyone fulfills them. And they might and they might not. Um, you know, for more veteran players, those are very easy requests that people will absolutely do for the Renown point. So after clearing out a bit of the land, I've got this sawmill full, 100 sap woods. I've got this one full with, well, almost full. There we go, now it's full. With stone, this one's working on copper. And I could make another one for ceramic, but you don't really need ceramic for quite a while. It's mostly for furniture. This one's also full. So about, you know, maybe 30, 40 real life minutes, I shall be able to um, put everything in this harvest house and get it started. Now, this thing, I believe, takes around eight real life hours to complete construction. Uh, that's why we want to do it as soon as possible. Also, uh, right now we have about 961 gold. You get a, a little bit from quests and uh, Renown is still steadily going up. Also, I've got a few news items here with like some snowballs. That's a holiday thing and a founder's reward. Very cool. I'm just going to go ahead and stick those into storage. I now have two storage chests. Uh, storage chests are very easy to craft. I just went over here and made a wooden storage chest. 20 wood, 2 uh, flint. There we go. And each of those is plus 400 to storage. It's You're, you're not going to max out your storage very early or, or this early on. But later it will become a little bit problematic. 
And uh, as a veteran player, like, the reason I don't really play my main account anymore is mostly due to not enough storage. I, If my money is capped... Um, also, someone just fulfilled my request for the copper bar so I can open the social pane and get that. Now I have two copper bars, and oh, someone just gave me some veggie soup. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that, and you know, that's free food. There we go. And, uh, you know, they get renowned for that, so... Uh, that's two of my four, you know, full day, real life day requests done. Okay, I took a long break. I did some chores, prepped some food, uh, dealt with some maintenance, and everything looks like it's turned off. So let's collect our loot here. We have, uh, there we go. We got the planks, we got the bricks, and we got the copper bars. We don't have enough copper to smelt, so we're just going to put that back in storage for now. You don't have to, but... Again, more planks. We got plenty of planks for future projects. Our crops are all harvested, so we're going to go ahead and just yoink those. And then uh, we got half a level, it looks like, on our gardening. Very cool. Gardening is very important to level up because once you hit level 25, you have a passive bonus to your uh, quality produce. Well, let's see if we got any quality produce. I got quality onion seeds, so that's rare. That's cool. Uh, so that will help grow quality onions. Now that we have the materials, we're going to go ahead and slide this all the way over to 100 and slide this to 35 and hit confirm. And now it's going to construct and it's going to take eight real life hours. All right. So, oh, also I built more storages up to eight of these chests is the maximum storage of 3,200. I did a bit more gathering. I want to point out that I took uh, all the fences down around the property and just so you know, Decorations do not count towards your storage, so if I take out 100 fences, well, it's still 1,132 storage. So don't be afraid of crafting decoration items. They do not count towards your maximum storage, but I'm going to go ahead and just store everything there that we have left over. And uh, I'm going to go do more in real life chores while this thing builds. Now, this right here, you want to have this built ASAP because this will bottleneck your main story quest. But, um... You know, if you don't progress the main story quest, you can't get all a lot of unlocks and extra things. So you want to do it as soon as possible. The house itself doesn't really do anything. The house doesn't make you money. It's just if you want to be a cozy gamer and decorate a house and invite people over and, and cook inside the house instead of having to cook outdoors like a caveman. So I'll be back later. Whenever you get a chance, go find Hodari. Make sure that you buy the standard pick recipe. And then we're also going to talk to... Um, <laughs> I forgot his name. Wow. Um, sorry, Ashura. It's been a busy day in real life. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go talk to Ashura and get the upgraded axe because we should be able to afford it by now. He's just down by the river. Down, down, down by the river. Any Baldur's Gate enjoyers in in the comment section? So he's out here fishing, and I didn't bring my worms, so. I'm not going to fish right now, but I am going to go through his dialogue and buy that standard axe recipe. We don't need the heartwood plank recipe for a while. And the heavy sawmill does everything the regular sawmill does just a little bit faster. You don't need it. Don't worry about it. It's just a kind of a, a money sink for now. It's a way to save time. All right. Those are the main upgrades that we're going to now work on with our new smelter and our sawmill. Because we can go and craft those as long as we're leveled up enough. Since we managed to harvest those vegetables, we can go ahead and talk to Bad Drew and just go through his dialogue and hit I grew some crops. There we are. He's going to give us a wheat seed, some renown, and there we go. Now that you've been cooking for a bit, go hit up Reth. He's got some quests for you, very simple quests, mostly cooking related, of course, because he is the town cook. Open his shop. Uh, actually, that was the button to request gifts. Okay, so we're going to open the shop. We're going to get the free stove and the prep station recipe and uh, the hearty vegetable soup recipe. So we're going to go ahead and learn all of those, and we will be making some of that later. Now that you've done some gardening quests for a bit and you've talked to Badru, you can go to Zeki's shop here, open his store, and he sells seeds. I highly recommend that when you have high enough level and high enough cooking and all that kind of fun stuff that you grow potatoes in tandem with tomatoes because they will keep each other watered and they sell decently well early on. They turn into some stuff... They can be quite useful later on, but you can really honestly just grow whatever you want. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to grow more carrots and onions. So each soil is a nine by nine. So we want uh, we want nine and nine. So uh, I don't know if I can afford that. So that's 200 and then 150. Yeah, I can actually afford exactly that. So 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I actually got that quality onion earlier, so I'm only going to buy eight. Now I'm going to buy nine of these. And I actually bought one too many. Well, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to keep these wheat seeds. Um, just because. Put them in storage, use them later. Why not? Now, remember, when planting, you want each uh, vegetable to buff the ones next to it. So, this carrot will buff the onions on top, on bottom, left, and right of it, whereas this onion on the left here will buff the carrots all around it. So, again, you don't want to put two of the same thing next to each other. Here, we do have two onions next to each other, but both of those onions are being buffed by the carrots. So, this thing will have weed prevention the entire way through. Now, eventually, you do want weeds to grow in your garden so that you can get some achievements and get some renown, but for now, you don't really have to worry about it too much. So once you receive the quest to return to the Phoenix Shrine where you were found, you should be able to turn in your Renown after that. So there we go. Now we increased our focus bonus to 25%. And um, essentially every time that you talk to this thing, you'll spend 100 Renown to gain more percentage by 5 up to a certain point. So I'm going to spend another 100 here. And now my focus bonus is 30%. But there's another shrine that you need to know about to increase your maximum focus. And the reason you want to increase your maximum focus is so that when you uh, eat food, you're not overeating, essentially. So there are very high-level foods later in the game that give you a lot of focus. And if your maximum focus is only sitting at 200, then you're only getting one-fifth of the value out of that meal. And it's pretty close. I'll show you where it's at from, uh, from here. It is actually at the Magi's Hollow right over here at this Dragon Shrine. Pretty quick walk, I'll see you there. So this is the area, and it's located right here on the map, just where I showed you, is where you go to increase your maximum focus. Though, you'll learn about that later as you do quests. So for now, don't worry too much about it, because it's not letting me do it. Uh, they changed a lot since the beta, apparently, and used to you could rush this before the quest gave it to you, but we'll get a quest later that will allow us to... Uh, increase our max focus. And I suppose the reason why is that new players would stumble upon this shrine first and then spend all their renown on it and then they would just be leveling up super slowly later on in the game. By the way, if you're having difficulty finding how to craft your upgrade tools, I know it can be confusing. And this is a recent patch. It wasn't like this in the beta. So a lot of people that have been playing for a while don't even realize this is happening. But here at the top, there is now a yellow arrow that has you scroll to the right. And there's your tools. So you want to work on crafting the standard axe and the standard pick. And you should have enough copper bars by now, hopefully. Uh, I believe that quest rewards actually give you enough uh, copper bars. So there we go. We crafted the standard axe. And now we're going to craft the standard pick. Now I want to talk about these tools for a second. They automatically take the place. Uh, they're not going to be in your inventory or anything. They automatically take the place on your tool wheel. Now, these have a yellow circle around them, whereas these don't. And you may be wondering, well, what's up with that? And that is because these have durability. Now, we just upgraded the axe, and there are certain trees you can now chop, like these bigger ones. But you can't chop the biggest ones. Not yet. So we're... Hello? Game? Is my internet crashing? I think my internet's... Oh, no, it's just being laggy. All right, so there we go. Now we can chop the bigger trees, and as you see, that yellow circle has a little bit of yellow missing from it. So, what you're going to uh, do is, as you complete more quests, you will be able to craft repair kits and use them on an anvil that you craft here at your base. But, there is another way to repair your gear that a lot of people didn't know about when they were new, which is actually, actually a little bit more convenient and a little bit more simple. And, it, it's more of a, a gold sink, whereas the other one is kind of, it's a time sink. So, if you want to repair your gear by harvesting resources like extra copper bars, and then repairing your tools yourself, you can. Or you can just go to the blacksmith in town and pay them to do it. Even if they're not there, even if it's 2 in the morning, uh, you know, the magical anvil that they have will simply just uh, give you repairs. And the reason why you want to repair your tools, because a lot of people don't realize how this works, is if your tool breaks, it is broken forever. And what that means is that you go back down to the tier 1 axe that you started with, and you have to craft a new one, it is much cheaper to repair your tools than to craft new ones. Always, always, always. And as you tear up to iron and eventually pallium tools, you will definitely not want to ever, ever, ever let those break. So once you're in the middle of town, 
Uh, here it is on the map. Uh, oh, actually, no, this is the wrong building. <laughs> it's been a while. So here we are in the middle of town. There's the big tower. That's the big, you know, like, uh, mayor's place. Here's the blacksmith. It looks just like this. You walk up to this anvil. You'll have a repair tools button. You can hit the repair all tool button for... Or right now, it's only going to cost me two gold. So chopping that one tree cost me two gold. Don't worry. Gold is insanely easy to come by. Don't ever, ever worry about the cost of repairing your tools. Just make sure that they don't break. And also, you can see this yellow circle at the bottom middle of your screen. Again, this is super important. Do not let your tools break. But now that we have the axe and we have the better pickaxe, you'll notice that when you mine things, you mine them way faster than before. And um, I'm lagging. Oh no, I'm lagging. Now, there's actually lots that we need to do to set up making money, but for now, what I want you to do is craft a bunch of makeshift arrows and some smoke bombs. We're going to be catching bugs. We're going to do some basic hunting, but we also need to get the proper crafting benches so that when we hunt things, we can turn them into leather. And to do that, the game doesn't really tell you, but in order to do it, you need to level up your furniture making so that you can uh, win some sort of favor with the furniture lady, and then she will teach you how to make a tannery. Uh, so go ahead and craft every single furniture that does not have a green check mark. You can use the filter here that says never crafted, and just craft one of everything of these just one time. That will level up your furniture making. And um, I don't know why the make button is grayed out. I can clearly, I have the materials for this. It's just bugged right now. So buggy. So this is what you're going to be doing for quite a while now. This is the uh, kind of the grindy stage of the game. You're going to be hunting animals. You're going to be catching bugs. You're going to be mining stone and copper. You're going to be chopping trees. Not the little ones. You can now chop the bigger ones, but not the biggest. Not yet. And you're going to be doing any quests and talk to any NPCs that ask for it. For instance, here, Tish wants to talk and she's in town. And um, also use all that wood that you're now chopping to start crafting furniture because you want to level furniture crafting up so you can unlock the tannery, the glass blowing station. Um, this is how you get silk, this is how you get leather, and glass for later. Talk to every character you can, exhaust all of their dialogue so that you get favor with them. And uh, also, some, as you level up uh, the NPCs by just talking to them. Later we'll talk about give, giving gifts, but we're still a little too poor, we're still a little too new to be doing that right now. And um, just, again, just by talking to them, you're still leveling up with them. You generally want to be around level 2 with them before you start giving them stuff. You don't have to, but it just helps. It's just simple enough. And uh, as we continue to do that throughout town, uh, you will start accumulating lots and lots of extra resources, which we will then also, again, turn into money uh, the smart way by refining it in some form or fashion. And then we can move on to the next step. So let's see. I forget what level she gives us the crafting station. It's actually part of the store now. They fixed it. Back in beta, you she would mail it. And now it's in the store for 100 each. So the, the glass furnace and the fabric loom are next to buy. So there we go. We're going to work on that. Also, don't forget to fish. You want to be at fishing level 7 at some point. Here is a list of things you should be selling as you go out and mass gather. Grilled fish, of course. Hopefully you're only fishing from the swirly poles because right now it's not really efficient to just... Fish in normal pools. It will be later, but not right now. Quality grilled meat. So if you cook any grilled meat from the animals you hunt uh, and it comes out as a quality meat, then go ahead and sell that. Don't use that for eating. And then if you get chapa tails or cernuck horns, those don't have much use right now. So they're basically just money. Go ahead and toss those in uh, to the shopping bin or sell them at the shop, whatever you want to do. And continue to do that for a little while. See, this grilled meat was a normal one, so I'm going to use that to eat. And there we go. Also, just as a random note, when crafting furniture, it's highly advised that you don't do it without focus because some some of these can cost quite a bit of materials to make, like this log cabin bed. It's going to give a lot more uh, experience if you have focus. And there we go. And we're going to continue to level up our furniture crafting here. And uh, just, again, craft everything that is ready to craft and has never been crafted. Okay, so now we have the quest to commune with this one, so now we can get our maximum focus increased to 250. Very, very cool. And uh, we still have some uh, renown to spare. You should mostly focus on your experience gain bonus first, because you want to gain as much experience as fast as possible. However, at some point, I believe when you reach 50% bonus, 
instead of getting 5% per renowned turn in, it's only 2.5%. At that point, you can come here and uh, turn in your renown until you only get 25 max focus instead of 50. And you just want to kind of keep both in, you know, kind of, uh, you want to get the maximum value from hitting up both shrines. Because at some point, that 25 will, I believe, turn into 12, and the other one will only turn into 1% uh, XP increase gain. So you, you'll, you'll notice it when it happens. Don't worry. You'll get plenty of renown later. Once your hunting level is level 3, go to Hussein, and you're going to buy a few upgrades. And these are huge upgrades. You want the standard bow upgrade and the standard arrow. And the reason why is this lets you one-shot the Surnux instead of having two shots. And the arrows fire much, much straighter. It is absolutely worth it to get these upgrades as soon as possible because it will exponentially increase your gold per hour farming. At some point, you'll come across these glowing trees. When you do, most people will call them out in the chat with FT for flow tree, or they'll just say flow tree. Make sure that you hit this even though people are waiting, even though it heals. You want to make sure that you have the tag on the tree so when the hive mind unanimously decides to chop it down, uh, <laughs> which I guess is now, yeah, I get it. You'll get some uh, flow-infused wood, which is used much, much later and is required to craft the in-game tools. And as soon as you can, upgrade to a standard bow. It's going to cost copper bars. You should have plenty of these by now, hopefully if you've been finding copper. And of course, start crafting the standard arrows as well. Uh, you don't want to bother with makeshift arrows. Now, these do cost copper bars, but they are 100% worth it. So... I always carry 100 on me at all times, and you basically will be using this arrow for the rest of the game. Yes, there are iron arrows later, but they aren't, they don't one-shot anything upgraded since. It's not, there's not really a reason to even use iron arrows. Standard arrows are the way to go. Also, I'm going to move this, uh, this campfire a little bit further away from the chest, so I'm not accidentally opening the chests. And my, uh, <laughs> control button got stuck there. All right, so now that we have the tier two bow, we can go ahead and sell our makeshift arrows. I'm just gonna throw them in the trunk there because we wanna be using the standard arrows for just about everything. Yes, the makeshift does one shot the chappas, but so does the standard. It's so cheap to make anyway. You might as well just get used to using standard arrows. Now, you may be tempted to sell these stones like this one right here. This onyx is worth 500. All this quartz is worth 1,400. That may sound like a lot to you. It is not a lot, and you do not want to sell these. You will need these much later in the game, so save them. Once you reach bug catching level 2, go find Ani, and you're going to learn the sneaky smoke bomb recipe. Only 100 gold. And all you do to craft it is you just need fur, a sundrop lily, and clay, which you should have plenty of. So as you gather and sell, you should have a little bit of surplus of money, so it's time to buy a few more things. Nice we're going to chat with Shish, and then we're going to buy her glass furnace recipe and the loom recipe. Don't buy any furniture recipes from her, because you can earn these by crafting one item from that tree and then learning it yourself. There's no reason to, like, spend any money on these. Later, of course, we'll be getting silk, and much later... Uh, we will unlock the ability to get upgrade chests from her. I believe that's from her store and not her. So she has a register over here. And uh, yeah, it's from the register. So if you want to upgrade your storage, which you shouldn't at this point, it's a it's 1,000 uh, gold to learn the recipe. But we don't need that for quite a while. Next up, uh, another thing too is, you again, you should still have a surplus of gold. You're going to go to Zeki's store right next door, you know, with the, the cat guy. And, uh, is he wearing a green hat? I don't remember that. Anyway, to the left, there's a little bag here. And, uh, you're gonna pay 500 gold for extra bag space. Absolutely crucial. Now we have three whole slots. And I know you've been getting annoyed at the it overflowing inventory full thing that's been going on. And, uh, yeah, the next <laughs> upgrade is 5,000, which actually is really cheap. But for us right now, it's not because we don't have our refining game going. Now, we do have, uh, about 500 more gold to spare. And... What you want to do with that is, you're going to want to save it because we haven't progressed far enough in the main story to actually spend it on the things that are going to make us even more money. 
So as you gather, this is what your inventory should kind of look like. You're hunting Cernux, so you're getting the antlers, you're picking up um, bugs, you're fishing, you're hunting, you're grabbing clay, you're grabbing any kind of plant on the ground. Again, more fishing, grabbing anything off the ground, more uh, <laughs> gathering here, chopping some wood, mining copper, and uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. You're just out mass gathering. Also, if you ever had a quest, or at some point you're going to get a quest called Where's in Low Places? It says, find the entrance to Zeki's After Hours store. Find the underground. Well, the underground, I will show you if I can close my menu, is right here on the map. I'm going to zoom it all the way out. You go south of Kalima Village, right here to Remembrance Beach. And it's the sewers right here. That is the underground, just so you know. Now it's time to make some fabric looms. I would say make three of these. You're going to need a bunch. You're going to need more than three later, but three is a good start. And don't worry about the glass furnace. We don't really have an abundance of stone yet. We'll do that when we get to iron pickaxes. So, but for now, we're just going to create the fabric looms. I uh, I need one more ceramic, which I thought I had some in here. Maybe in uh, two minutes, I'll have one more. Well, this is fine for now. I'll go ahead and plop the two down. And there we go. I know it, it's not uh, aesthetically pleasing how I have my stuff set up, but it works. So, at the Fabric Maker, you have a bunch of Cernuck hide, and you're going to turn pretty much uh, <laughs> as much as you can into leather. This is just free money. It's mostly used for crafting. Uh, fabric is with cotton, which you would grow on your soil. We don't have enough soil yet to bother with cotton, and fabrics... It's whatever. We're just taking all the hides and turning it into more money because one hide is worth 13 gold and one leather is worth 15 gold. So you're just making more gold. That's that's all we're doing is just turning gold into more gold. Just a reminder, whenever you harvest your crops, make sure that you have focus because these things take a long time to grow and you want as much experience as possible when picking them up since gardening does take quite a while to level at the start. Once you are level 4 cooking, that's when you want to visit Reth again. It's okay to visit before, but it's much more efficient to do it at level 4. Pick up the free mixing station and standard oven, oven, sorry, and then pick up steak dinner, and you don't have to worry about uh, these other recipes here, like fish tacos, ramen. We're not going to be really using them right now. Eventually, you can pick them up, but not quite yet. Now that you have leather, you can go ahead and find Ani, and then buy the standard belt if you want to. Now that you're level 2 gardening, find Bedru, and he now has a shop you can buy from. You want to buy the seed collector and as much soil as you can afford. This is the big money maker right here. Now it says it requires gardening level 3, but we can go ahead and buy one. And it's going to exponentially go up in cost every time you buy another. This is a huge money sink, but it will have massive returns. You can have up to nine total soils currently in the game. Now that you have the recipes, you're going to go ahead and craft a stove. Also, you will need a prep station. And finally, craft yourself an oven. There we go. And yes, you can cook these outside, no power source necessary. Once you have these three items put down, you can now cook yourself steak dinners, except we don't have any wheat, but that's not the point. The point is that now you can push your social friends button, go to requests, and you can now request steak dinners from random strangers, who will be more than happy to oblige you for that one renown point. This is way more efficient than cooking it yourself, though eventually you will get wheat and be able to cook these, but for now, if you are very low on food, Due to lack of hunting, you have plenty of produce which you can cook hearty vegetable soups. You will need mushrooms though, which I currently don't have, but I am not in need of food at the moment. If you are a bit lost, these are all the things that you should have by now. You should have a house under construction. Let's see how much time I have. One hour, 21 minutes to go. I have three soils or more if you can afford it. An oven, a prep table, and a stove. Eight storage chests and three campfires. For refining stations, you should have two smelters going, one always with copper and the other one always with stone or ceramic. But don't go overboard on stone. You don't need too many more stone bricks from here on out until you start building better furniture. Two looms, both cranking out leather, 
and one is open in case you need anything. So what this means is I can go and pull out a sawmill if I need to. I can uh, put down some other crafting stations, which we're going to unlock here in a little bit. We will be able to unlock more st maximum stations pretty soon, but that is another gold sink. For your skill levels, you should be fishing 7, cooking 4, gardening 2, mining 5, hunting 4, bug catching 3, foraging 5, and furniture around level 7. Get, get, it, get it there eventually. You'll notice that my character is not quite there yet. You'll see that I'm still lacking a fishing level. I'm uh, behind on bug catching, and I haven't really touched furniture since level 3. I need to, but it's I'll get there eventually. Also, I want to point out, it did not take me seven hours to get to this point. I have been very busy in real life doing chores, doing other kinds of work. So I've only really been playing maybe one to two hours since I started building this Harvest House. For NPC progression, I suggest Zeki, Delilah, and Badru. These three will give you higher tier seeds for your garden, which will massively increase your passive income. And Reth for higher cooking, but that's not very important early on. When you get the quest, Catching a Flaw Thinger, the location is right up here on this hill overlooking the farm. Here it is exactly on the map. It's to the left of the quest marker here. Just make sure it's in your inventory and then put, push the use button. That's all you got to do. So remember all that leather that you've been uh, milling in the hoppers here or in the whatever this is, the fabric maker, the looms. Well, you're going to sell most of the leather just for money, but you're going to keep like 20 to 30 of them. You don't have to keep too much on hand. And your cooking level should be high enough by now that whenever you cook a star quality fish, uh, they almost always come out star quality. So this is just free money at this point. So as you can see here, uh, we're getting paid 2,436 gold for just this tiny amount of materials. All right, we finally got some weeds in our crops. Just go ahead and push the use button to remove them, and then they don't really have a purpose, so you can just sell them in the box. They're worth 10 gold each, so it's it's basically free money. Once you reach fishing level 7, you will be able to buy the best uh, refining station in the game, and that is the Glowworm Farm. However, you're not going to have the ingredients to craft this for a while. It's just nice to have it available when we do have those ingredients, if you want, you can upgrade your fishing rod. You can buy the worm farm. You have to buy the worm farm to be able to buy the glow worm farm. But um, you don't really need a standard fishing rod. You don't need to upgrade your fishing rod anymore. Once you hit level 7, you're basically done. Also, I just want to point out, there was an old kind of semi-gold cheat with the fisherman's brew. This no longer works, so do not buy the Fisherman's Brew. It's completely useless. It costs a thousand gold. It's a very low percent chance to flip it for more silver on average. Or, or gold, I'm sorry. You're only going to, on average, make three gold per craft, and it's just, it's just, not, uh, it's just not worth buying ever, so skip that one. All right, it's been eight real-life hours, and the house is finally complete. Time to collect more quests. We got some flooring if you want to decorate for dish. Check your mailbox. And uh, there we go. So that's going to help advance the story now. Now that your house is built, more quests will open up. So make sure to talk to everyone with exclamation points. Um, also make sure to talk to everyone every single in-game day so you can raise their relationships. Here's what mine looks like You know, after a few hours of play. Most of them still level 1. I still have not given any gifts out. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But uh, grab every quest and turn in every quest that you can. Uh, especially now that you have your house, more will open up. So don't worry, we're going to go get the, the, the glider soon. I know you, you've been seeing players glide around and you're wondering, well, when do I get to do that? It's soon. Just hold tight. So once you have your house and you've talked to Kenyatta, you'll get the Strong Foundations quest, which says, Visit the cash register at City Hall. So there is one very important thing that you don't want to buy yet, and that is Ritz. These cost Renown, and they scale up as you buy them. When you buy these, it just opens up more little squares on your housing plot. You won't need them for quite a while, and you absolutely do not need to spend any gold on any of this house stuff because it does not make you money. This is in-game purchases which you should avoid, even if you're a cozy decorative gamer, Avoid buying these until you have nine 
nine soils, and all the crafting licenses. So, a crafting license is uh, whenever you have crafting stations or refining stations, you buy these and you can get more. You can place up to like, I think, 35 or 37. And yes, these get more expensive as you buy them as well. Maybe it's only just 30, but you won't be able to buy them until you increase the value of your house and visit your plot, which we will do later through soil. Once you reach cooking level 5, you can talk to Reth and you can learn the meaty stir-fry recipe. This one is amazingly good and will be a huge staple later on. However, you don't exactly need it at the moment. For whatever reason, it says requires cooking level 6, but you don't. It's, it works at cooking level 5. And uh, this thing is great, but right now your focus isn't high enough. And money is more importantly spent on soil, and you're probably not going to have enough rice. So avoid this for now, but do keep it in mind for later. Like, my main character still eats media stir-fries almost every day. At gardening level 3, talk to Bedrew and get the standard watering can. It says level 4, but you don't need to be level 4, just level 3 is fine. And then also, while you're at it, you might as well buy as much soil as possible. Yes, that's right. Spend all your money on soil. I'm not joking. At some point, find Hodari and buy the iron bar recipe. At some point, you're going to get the quest called Dire Circumstances, which wants you to find Kenley's Lost Sandwich. And you may be wondering, where the heck is that? So if you open the map here towards Phoenix Falls, there's a little gazebo here. And inside the gazebo is a lunch pail. There's his lost sandwich. There you go. You are probably wondering what to do now for money, what to save, what to sell. Your storage is starting to stack up. Well, I have the complete list for you. Here we go. So you want to save all bugs. We're going to use those for fertilizer later. Uh, all food, you want to save or eat it. Crops, you want to save or cook it. The shiny pebbles, you gift to Einhar. Zeki coins, you turn in for a random item at Zeki's shop. Fish, you want to cook and then sell it. You want to save your mushrooms. Crystal Lake Lotus are the purple flowers. And you want to sell those if you never plan to make furniture. Otherwise, keep a few because you might need them for a quest. Emerald Carpet Moss, also sell these if you never plan to make furniture. Otherwise, keep a few. You want to save pearls, spice sprouts save, sundrop lily save, save your garlic, save your ceramic and gemstones. For clay, turn half your clay stockpile into ceramic. But keep the other half because you still need it for crafting. Copper bar, save those. Fabric, save all those. Flint, you can sell 90% of your flint. Unless you want to level furniture, it's pretty much, you're not going to use it or need it for much. Flow infused wood, save all of that. Fur, you want to make it into sneak smoke bombs and then sell it. You want to save a few though. Leather, save like 20 or so leathers. Otherwise, you can save all of it for furniture crafting. Um, otherwise, sell it. Plant fiber, use it in, if you use it in furniture crafting, great. Otherwise, sell nearly 90% of it, but keep a little bit around. Because now that you don't have those bushes in your island, it's, or your housing plot, it's a lot harder to acquire. Wooden planks, you want to save those. Cernuck antlers, save uh, those. Um, well, I actually wrote that wrong. It, the Cernuck antlers you want to sell, unless it is the Proud Horn Cernuck antler, because you'll use that for tracking later, so my bad. But this will punish people who have me on mute, so yeah. Cernuck hides, you want to save a few, turn most into leather. Silk thread, save those. Silver ore, save those. Chapa tails, sell those. Stone, save those. Because we're going to turn it into glass later. Stone brick, save those. And briar daisies, also save those. Oh, and don't forget to upgrade your watering can and your belt. So after cleaning my inventory, this is what it looks like. And this is what I'll be selling. So I'm just going to sell the stacks of all of these. And you can see that it's plenty of gold for the next step. There we go. And not too bad. 600 on that one on the purple flowers. Very good. So yeah, we're at uh, 3,159 gold. And yes, you guessed it, buy another soil. So now with eight soils, there's only one more to go and we only need 3,000 for the last piece. But uh, I didn't farm hard enough. But here we are. This is the pattern that I'm currently using. I have potatoes all down the middle, and what potatoes will do is allow the crops around it to retain water, which means you don't have to water them, uh, so they will continue to grow even if you aren't attentive to your garden. It's not a big deal, 
but um, the wheat and the rice basically give you a boost to yield, meaning you'll get more out of it. And uh, you need rice for stir fries, you need wheat for all bread products in the game, so it's good to get these early and get a good stash of them going, but it's not going to be our main crop down the line. This is just so we don't end up, you know, not having good food for focus. And the potatoes are just great to uh, turn into seeds and sell, or sell, or turn into preserves and eat. They used to be the most efficient food in the game, but I think that got nerfed. I'll have to redo my calculations since I haven't played in a while. Okay, it's time to go get the glider. It's time to go to the second area. This is Bahari Bay. So from the housing plot, you just go east, and you go middle of the map. You don't go down here. You go in the middle of it. And the reason I had you wait is because we have a few quests that we can also do while we're here. And there's not much of a reason to come here early on because you can't mine the iron. And yeah, there's a few NPCs you can butter up and, you know, uh, start talking to. But essentially, not a, not a whole lot going on. So the very first thing we want to do while we're here is you should have the, qu uh, the quest by now. Wait, what is this? Oh, okay. That's, um, I actually have that. Uh... <laughs> That's a new quest. That wasn't in the game when I played. So one is called Not So Good Boy, and it's, um, you have to find Tal's hidden stash of papers, which is pretty easy to find, but it might be bugged, so we're going to see if it's bugged together or not. So as soon as you enter Bahari Bay, you see little doggo paw prints, right? And if you follow the paw prints, they lead this way. So there we go. We got more paw prints, and then you just start climbing up the mountain. There we go, and there it is, the uh, the hidden uh, chewed newspapers buried right up top here. Here's the entrance to Bahari Bay, so and here it is on the map. So that is an easy, easy quest. Now we're going to go talk to uh, N N N Najuma and uh, <laughs> uh, see what is required to build the glider, which is not too much. It's pretty simple. And we should have more than enough ingredients by now, but we're going to go ahead and initiate that quest. Now, it's been a while, and I don't know if it's changed, but I didn't want you to, like, bring the ingredients, you know, pre-prepared. Uh, apparently, this character's sleeping at the moment, but we can still talk to him <laughs> through the door, huh? That's fun. Never met this person before. Let's just yell at them through their doorway. And there we go. So, planks, fabric, and leather. Well, you should have had the fabric from quest turn-ins, the leather we have, and the planks we definitely have. But we also need to do something else while we're here. And that final quest is a look to die for. We just need five shells. And so we're just going to go to the beach here and pick up five shells. And then we can teleport home, grab the ingredients, come back, and turn in the glider quest. Also, while you're out and about, this is iron. You see the little dark colored ores in this uh, set of rocks, you need to start um, gathering these. And also while you're here, um, the darker colored trees, which you won't find a lot of, but these kind of darker leaf trees, those are heartwood and you want to chop some of those as well. Most of the trees will be up north, we'll get into that area later, but for now go ahead and start chopping these trees down. And uh, we'll learn the recipe to uh, use the sawmill to turn these into planks. Oh, we got some uh, of the new animals. I've actually never seen these before. I have not played since these got added to the game, but yeah, go ahead and murder them, I guess. They uh, they seem to jump into trees and hide. I bet if I chop this tree... I can't chop this tree down, can I? Oh, okay, well that one's safe. Uh, maybe next time. I forget what those things are called, but apparently I got some loot. Uh, again, this is all brand new. This hasn't been in the game. Mujin main. Okay, cool. We got fur, we got Mujin meat. All, all good. By the way, in case you're wondering, these are fast travel points. You should have enough money now to start using them if you want to. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, just kind of plan out your routes a bit better or take the lazy way and just run back. So you're going to start seeing a bunch of lootable little things here, and these are shells. Now, the quest only wants you to get five, but I recommend that you get more of them because they make really cheap gifts. And uh, also, the oysters can, uh, they, they can be okay money sometimes. But uh, you just want to run around for maybe 5 to 10 minutes and just grab as much stuff as you can. Also, if you, um, if you want, these crabs are really good to catch. They, they count as bugs, but uh, there's some recipes that use them later, so you might as well pick them up. They're also not bad for money. Like, this crab is worth 46 gold. Like that's, They're everywhere. Like At certain times of the day, you will see crabs all over this place. Now, the purple ones are a little rarer than these, but you can still use them for the crab meat later on in recipes. 
So, remember a while back when I said I would explain how overflow storage works? So essentially, let's say I loot a brand new item with a full inventory, it won't let me pick it up, my inventory is full, but if I loot this dead Cernuck, and let's say I have, you know, Cernuck meat right here, which um, I can definitely loot, but let's say, say I couldn't loot the hide. Well, the hide would go down here in the overflow storage, but when the overflow storage is full, and it tries to loot something, it will then just send it to storage, so watch. So, well, I had both of those in my inventory, so that's a bad example. But, uh, if I loot something that share, you know, that has multiple things in the item bag, it, it'll just send it to storage. So I can basically run around, and as long as I'm not trying to farm something brand new, uh, let's see if this little guy drops uh, anything that I can't quite exactly carry. Nope, okay. <laughs> bad e Again, I'm, it's, I'm having trouble finding examples here. Oh, he ran into the tree. I can't chop that tree, so he's uh, he's safe. Safe from the predator. Or... <laughs> well, we'll not say that word on YouTube. People don't like that word. You know, aliens versus. But uh, maybe this will drop a horn or something. And uh, you'll notice that I'm kind of doing some, like, bunny hop jump shots here. I have, a, I have a video on my channel that kind of explains advanced hunting techniques. So that you can, you know, keep track of enemies and stuff like that. Again, another bad example. Wow. Um, anyway, you'll have to use your imagination on this one. I clearly can't show it. Perhaps this iron will be a good example. Okay, there we go. Overflow item with gold ore was sent to storage because I picked up two stone and two iron ore. By the way, you should hang out here and get a lot of iron ore, about as much as you can stand. I'm doing this until I hit mining level 6, which I'm almost there. And uh, you can see my items are just being sent to storage, so it's not like you're losing them. They're just, uh... They're just overflowing into the magical void item box, so it works out for us. Once you return back, you're going to want to put both smelters on iron because it takes six minutes to make one iron bar, and you're going to need a lot of these. We might just end up buying a bunch. Also, bust out those sawmills once again. I'm putting three sawmills to work this time because we need to uh, make heartwood planks, which uh, I haven't learned yet, so I gotta go learn it. Oh, I made a small error earlier. Uh, you no longer get two fabrics from the quest. You get a cotton instead that you're supposed to turn into a fabric. So instead, just go to Tish's shop, which is right up here at the furniture store. Go to the register and then just, just buy a fabric. It's 190 which may be pricey, but you need it for the quest. And you're going to get that money back anyway. Oh, man, I'm... Oh, jeez, I forgot. Okay, so gel... <laughs> when we turned in the shells, he gives us, he gives us five fabric. Yeah, I, I know, I messed up on my notes. It happens, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> if you already bought the fabric, I, I'm sorry, okay? Just, you're stuck with it. It's okay, you'll use it later on something. And with that, let's talk about gifting, because you gotta gift five things to villagers, and it's pretty easy to do now that we're a little bit more stacked. So, for instance, Jell, you, once you've gotten to know these villagers a bit, because you've been playing a bit, I assume, you know what they, they're into. Clearly, this guy is a fashion dude, so if you give him fabric, he's gonna take it, right? So, one thing you can do is you can go down here to this bottom left icon and click on it, and you can ask them about gifts. Sometimes they'll talk about themselves, sometimes they will talk about other villagers or NPCs, whatever you want to call them. So, the way the gifting system works is you can gift, like, uh, like two gifts that they really like and two gifts they really love throughout a real-life week. So, for the West Coast, Sunday night, 11 Central Time, or 12 Central, I forget, is when it resets. And you have a whole real-life week to get each of these uh, NPCs four gifts in total. But each in-game day, you, can, you have a new opportunity to give them a new gift. So you got quite a lot of time. So the way to do this is you have to talk to everyone. You click this little icon, and they'll talk about something. Like, Kenyatta comes into the shop... Uh, wearing the most fascinating piece of jewelry. She claims it was made of barracuda teeth. I would like to see one of these creatures for myself. So this is Jell telling us that a gift he would like is a barracuda, which is a fish. You gotta go fish it up. And you will gain extra re you'll gain extra rep with Jell if you do that. You don't have to give him a barracuda, though. But if you do, you'll unlock the next gift, and then the next, and the next, and the next. And you can do four of those a week. But instead, we're just going to click this little gift icon, and we're just going to click on fabric. It'll give him one fabric, and he said, wonderful, this is just what I needed to finish my next piece. And then you'll see that we got a double thumbs up from him. Sometimes it's only one, depending on the gift quality and what they like. 
Uh, also, if you try to give someone something they don't really care about, then they just won't simply take it. Now, Tish is also a fabric kind of, you know, uh, furniture lady. So let's ask her what she wants. She wants some sapwood planks. That's an easy gift. That's a real easy gift. And it changes all every week, right? Uh, anyway, but, uh, you know, let's just uh, try to give her something really garbage-like. How about a... How about uh, just regular sapwood? Because I didn't grab planks. Oops. Uh, so she denied it. So we can try again. Let's try to give her a smoke bomb. Uh, she didn't like that either. But y you get the idea. Uh, <laughs> let's give her some uh, vegetable soup. She didn't want that. She she's very picky. So we're just not going to give her anything. But we got one out of five. And you can run around. And you know, we had some. we actually had some shells. So, again, a sapwood plank is a really easy gift. Oh, wait, there's one. Let's just get, give her the damn plank. There we go. And uh, now she's thinking about making a table out of it. whoop de doo I don't care. I don't really care about fake relationships. But maybe you do. Anyway, so go around the village and try to give your junk away to five people. Uh, some people will just about take anything, and then some won't take anything. Also, if you don't know them well enough, this button won't highlight, so you just gotta talk to them and chat with them more. There we go. I'm just gonna try to give him a random shell. Does he want it? And he did want it because he likes to fish, so he likes shells. That's pretty simple. What about this guy? Uh, let's talk to him what he wants. I missed what he wanted. But hey, that's okay. If you miss what they want, this is what you do. Let me close the menu. You open the relationship thing and you find them. So Shane, he wants nap weed, which is weed grown from our crops, so... Um, <laughs> if we get some weeds, we can give it to them. And we, and t what is today? Today in real life is Tuesday. So I have until Sunday night to, to find him some damn weeds. But for now, where'd he go? He snuck away. He's a little sneaky guy. Um, <laughs> hello, Kenley. Kenley is a big boy. You can see that he's pretty round. So I bet he wouldn't mind if I gave him some food. Oh, look at that. He took it and he likes it. There you go. Now she's a big boy too, or girl. And so I'm just going to feed her because she needs more food for her bulk. Uh, so she took it. There you go. And uh, now we have five gifts. That's pretty easy. Kinley was the one who gave us this quest. And there we go. It is completed. We also got a grilled oyster. out of. Uh, out of that's not a good trade. But there you go. That's how to do the gifting. According to expert sources, it resets at 10 p.m. Central Time. I don't know what your time zone is, but just look it up online. And, and depending on daylight savings, that might change too. I don't know. The company that made this game, they're based in California, the American state, you know, United States. I, I don't know, man. Also, if you see this little house icon to the left of our daytime little compass thing in the top right, that means someone is at your house plot wanting to talk to you. It's usually pretty serious. And, um, you know, they 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 probably got the cops. No, I'm just playing. It just means an NPC wants to talk to you at your house. And, and, and they'll be there forever. You don't have to, like, run there right away. They're not going to leave or anything. They're basically in two places at once because uh, they're, they're a wizard like that. Oh, yeah. Ashura is the one that sells the plank recipe. He's the big, he's the big guy from Persona 5, you know, Sh Shijiro. Anyway, you need 500 gold. I'm at 447, and it's nighttime. I got, I got to go make some money. Now it's time to show you a simple way to do the Strong Foundations quest that has been on the screen. To increase the value of your house, besides those soil plots that we got going on, all you gotta do is put down some of that furniture you have that you crafted earlier. So just grab some random beds and benches and bookshelves and stools and put them in that house. That's all you gotta do. It's real simple. That's all you gotta do, man. Try to get the ones that you crafted and not ones that you found. Uh, so let's see if this is enough here. So we're going to run into the house and just dump some furniture down. I'm not a decorative, cozy kind of guy, but, uh, I know people are going to scream and cringe at me for my decoration, you know, prowess. But, uh, have you ever seen the memes where it's like, uh, like this is all men need and it's just like a bed and a computer <laughs> or a, t a TV and video games. And there we go. So we just did strong foundations by putting some furniture down and then Esh just shows up at 1am, you know, just... Just looking smug as hell. Look at her. And, and there you go. So that's the quest. And this pretty much opens up a lot of the game. And uh, now you have to prove your devotion, of course, right? Um, so what that means is, uh, yeah. You have to fulfill five player requests. That one's easy. I taught you how to do that earlier. You open your friend's pane. You go to request. You go to um, see if anyone needs anything. So I can gift the copper bars. There you go. And the Cernak hides. There you go, so that's two out of five. 
And if you just log out it on multiple times, you can find more requests pretty dang quickly. So fulfill five weekly villager item requests. I taught you that earlier. We're going to go to, uh, you have to talk to the villagers, just like I said. And uh, Ashura, like, we don't know what he wants. We don't know what these guys want. But uh, we know that Shane wants a weed. <laughs> oh, man, I hope he doesn't smoke it. And uh, I'm just kidding, YouTube. And Esh, Esh wants fur. So we're going to give her a fur later. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so there you go. You gotta fulfill those. Now, Barracuda, that's a little harder to get. I don't know if we're gonna fulfill that one or bother doing it on this video, but you get the idea. That's how to fulfill the five weekly villager item requests. And if, for whatever reason, logging in and out doesn't work, you can always just ask in the chat, I guess. If you're social, you can be like, and they'll, and then they would be like, and, and then you can just ask them, hey, uh, you know, request something. I need to do my quest. And they'll, they, they just want freebies, so they'll do it. Now it's time to get your glider. Make sure that you have the quest items in your inventory. You cannot pull from your storage for whatever reason. Uh, so there we go. We now have the glider. All right. And uh, in, back in the day, you had to open your inventory and then put it and then equip it. But it just auto equips now. So that's cool. So the way the glider works is when you push jump while you're in the air, you will open your glider. So it looks like this. Now you can get a lot more, you can get to a lot more places around the world, and it's fun just to kind of spam it. it. It's not really the fastest way to travel unless you're jumping from a high place, and even then, uh, it just opens up the game pretty much completely now at this point. You can go anywhere you want, there's nothing holding you back, there's no quests blocking your route, the entire game is now yours. And you know what it, that means? You need gold. You need gold for all those big boy upgrades. So it's time to grind, grind, grind. Go hunt, go fish, refine everything that you gather, turn it into something, and then sell it, and then buy the next big thing. So here's a list of what I want you to be working on in the meantime. So now I'm going to give you an upgrade path, otherwise this video would take about a full week to make instead of... You know, just the four to five days I poured into it. Anyway, let's uh, let's go over the list now. So the upgrade priority, get soil number nine. It's the last soil. It's like 3,000 gold. Upgrade your copper X to iron. Upgrade your copper pick to iron. Upgrade your watering can and gardening tools to iron when you can. Your bug belt to iron as well because it makes a huge difference when catching bugs. Your bow and fishing pole can remain unupgraded. All the bow does is let you shoot arrows slightly further and more straight. It actually kind of makes you unlearn how to shoot the bow for a while once you upgrade. And you already one-shot Cernux and two-shot almost everything else. There's not a real reason to upgrade the bow. It's the, it's the arrows that increase the damage. The bow just increases the range. Then you want Paleum and Flow Tree refine upgrades. Then you want the Paleum grade tools. Axe first, then pick. Always axe first. Then the gardening stuff, then the bug belt. You want crafting licenses. You want as many glowworm boxes as you can get. You want backpack and storage chest upgrades after that. And that, that that's the biggest money sink, is the uh, insane storage chest cost. It's 100000 for the final upgrade. And um, I'm, I'm waiting for them to add another upgrade. I'll pay 300 k for the next thing if they just give me more dang storage. Let's go. So I'm going to show you a representation of once you... once We're going we're gonna to fast forward time a bit. And show once you reach this level what to do and why you wanted to do it in the first place. Well, apparently the storage chest only costs 50k now because too many people complained and couldn't farm hard enough. Oh well. So let me show you the setup once you have all those crafting licenses and you have the nine plots and how you want to do this and how you want to make money. So these glowworm boxes, they serve two purposes. One, they are one of the only ways in the game to basically get free and infinite glowworms, which let you catch the best fish in the game. They let you catch uh, the rarest, most expensive, uh, best-selling fish in the game. Or you can just be lazy and sell the worms in the item box. So a stack of 100 glowworms sells for 2,500. A stack of 100 fertilizer sells for 500. So, you know, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of gold right here. And here's the here's the thing with the glowworm box, right? All you have to do is go to Zeki's shop and buy 30 mushrooms, uh, which, you know, you're spending your own gold to do that. And then you just chunk, chunker in the ute, you just, <laughs> you chunk the mushrooms into the box and it will spit out items worth more gold than you spent, a lot more gold than you spent. 
So it's just free and infinite endless money. And the more of these you have, the more money you will make every single day. So technically, if I wanted to, I could get five more of these worm... Or no, I can get like six more worm boxes if I wanted. But this is more than enough. Next up for the, uh, the plot here, the uh, soil plots, here is how I do it. We have apples in each corner and in the middle. Those are a 9x9. Nine nine. And then the way it works is we have carrots, tomatoes touching, you know, the middle here on all four sides. And then on the outer edges, we have carrots and onions. And then in the middle, we have a potato. So what this configuration does, and I made a video on my channel about this configuration, is everything is water retained, everything is weed prevented, and everything is growth boosted, and everything is harvest boosted. Well, not everything is growth boosted. The, uh, the, the potatoes aren't. The middle ones aren't, sadly. But um, almost everything except for eight crops are uh, growth boosted. That means they grow faster. But everything is harvest boosted, which means you gain more uh, from it. Also, guess what? These worm boxes provide all the fertilizer you could ever need for the harvest boost, which I didn't put them in the trees because they recently became unbugged, and I was afraid to re-fertilize them because they would disappear if I did, but I think they fixed that. But you can see here I have like 90 plus fertilizers in every square, and so I'm gaining the maximum output yield of crops all of these are planted with quality seeds. My character's uh, gardening level is 40, and so every crop that grows will always be of quality. And uh, from there, I take the crops, and I do two things with them. I put as much as I can into these preserves, so if I take apples and turn them into preserves, they suddenly become worth even more gold, right? Uh, also, I can just eat the apple preserves as a really easy and quick food item, so it, it serves two purposes. It feeds me and it makes me rich. Secondly, I have infinite seeds because I can just put the crops in here and it spits out seeds, which I have plenty of. And uh, by the time this all grows up, I will have, like, I could double my seeds if I wanted. And uh, for whatever reason, I can, you know, remove the sawmills, you know. And put out more seed harvesters. I have enough machines for basically anything I want to do, right? Uh, oh, I actually have another glowworm farm right there I could be using. But oh well, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> the problem that I have faced in this game, and I'm going to go over why you need all this money in the first place. I'm afraid to check my mail because I don't want more inventories. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to run out of room. The, the, my gripe with the game right now is that I have no more storage for anything. Like, at all, okay? And you can be like, well, just sell stuff. Well, there's a gold cap of 300,000. I have nothing left in the game to buy. There's, I mean, yeah, I can go buy some Christmas decorations, but I'm not a decorations gamer. I don't, like, look at my house. Look, look, look at my big-ass house. It's empty. There's nothing in here but fireplaces. You know, because I like the heat, I guess. But... <laughs> Essentially, there is nothing left to spend gold on, and there's nothing left to store, so instead of getting 999,999 apples in my inventory, for whatever reason, you know, maybe I was like, okay, I could, I could just get a bunch of, you know, star quality fishes and bugs and put them everywhere, but there's a limit on that too, and so I've just run out of stuff to do. But let me tell you why you want to have this set up first, before you do anything else in the game, and the reason why is that some of these furniture items, which I'll never use unless they have a purpose, are insanely ridiculously expensive, especially during holiday events. So some of these furniture items can cost you like 60 to 100,000 gold, and there's like 20 different variations in colors or something. I could be over-exaggerating the cost a bit, but it's basically that. Like when I was sitting at Gold Cap, whenever the Chapa Chase Majin Market event came out, I blew, like, all my gold immediately, and I still didn't have everything bought. And so, you know, it's a good thing I had all this stuff stashed away to sell, so I could get immediately back to gold cap and then buy the other half, and even then, I still didn't have enough. So I had to sit here and farm for, like, 14 days straight to be able to buy everything, which I'm never gonna use, and it has no purpose. But the point is, is that instead of waiting until next holiday to buy the remaining items, you want to be on top of it, because... You want to be able to buy every single thing there is to buy. 
And uh, also, at, like, for housing expansions, right? You can now put up to 30 of these little, like, bad boys, right? Instead of 15. The old, the old cap was 15. Well, if I want, I, I could spin gold on some more blueprints. I've got a whole bunch here. And uh, just materials to build. I, I can just straight up buy materials. I don't need to go farm iron. I don't need to go farm wood or anything. I can go to the, the blacksmith shop and just buy the iron bars, which is way more efficient than actually going out and mining. I made a video on my channel about that, by the way. So the whole point of setting up these, uh, these soils and setting up your glowworm boxes and min-maxing your economy is so that you can save time later when you actually need something. Like, if I wanted to craft one of the best furnitures in the game, the only thing I have to manually farm ever again is flow trees and paleo ore. That's it. And if they ever introduce player trading, I can just buy it from other players because I will always have money to buy anything I want. And that, yeah, it might kill the purpose of the game. It might make the game too easy. But, uh, you know, for me, that's an accomplishment in and of itself as being a rich, wealthy player because in real life, I'm broke as heck. And with that said, that's the video. This is just a beginner guide. There's still a whole lot more for you to do in this game. You can go smooch some of the NPCs on the lips. You can go and uh, be all their best friends and give them stuff and unlock all their cool stuff. Buy all the wallpapers. You can grind your, your trade skills all the way up. I'm level 102 fishing. That's insane. That's, that's a lot of fishing. That is real life days worth of fishing gone from my physical being put into this game. And um, you can do the same. There are people with like level 800 cooking out there that just cook cakes all day. I don't understand why they do it. They do it for money, apparently. I do my way for money. They do their thing for money. That's been nerfed. My way hasn't. But regardless, there's a lot to do in this game. You can do all the quests. You can see that I still haven't done all the quests. I haven't found a ship because I don't care. I don't need to. But you do you. You do whatever makes you fun. If you want to fill a house full of toilets, then... And, and then, like, make a skibbity toilet meme or something? Go for it. That would be a funny video or, or a funny meme on Reddit or on in the Discord. You do you, bro. I have you fully set up and ready to go so that you can make all the money and never be broke because one of the worst things that caused a lot of people to quit this game was the insane grind for gold. And I have you perfectly set up in a single day, by the way. Like, you could do everything I showed in this video in one sitting without even a lunch break. Without even, you know, getting up to stretch. You can do it all in a single sitting. And then you're you're set. You're basically set for life. It would be like if someone just, you know, as soon as you were born in real life, they just handed you a Lamborghini and uh, a nice job at a tech factory or something. It was like, go get him, kid. That's what I just did for you. And so, with that said, please like the video. There's going to be paleo elitists out there. They will downvote this video because... Uh, th they have this weird, like, fanatical view of the game that it should only be cozy and the only reason to play it is to decorate a house and not conquer the economy. And they're going to downvote the video. So I need your help. Please thumbs up the video. And also, you can subscribe if you want. I might put out more paleo vids if this one does well. I've got a bunch on my channel that are pretty good. There's a few that are outdated, and I've updated the title, the description, and the pinned comment. So... Uh, yeah, there's a few dupes that were fixed. There was a few money exploits that were fixed, but the videos are still up I'm not gonna delete the videos that hurts my channel. Anyway, the point is is that the video's over. Thank you so much for watching Mwah! Give you a kiss on your forehead and uh, With one last thing there's one last thing I need you to do and that is I need you to click the video on the right side of your screen Now here's the thing with my videos if you don't click that video something bad will happen I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen if you don't click the video on the right side of your screen right now, your internet is going to be very buggy and very messy and you're going to call support and they're not going to help you and they're going to send a tech out that doesn't know what he's doing and he's not going to help you and you're going to call multiple times and you're going to have so many internet problems and disconnections. It's going to be a nightmare. So you better click that video.